Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Creatio Club's online meeting, a special regular event for analysts, developers, and other power users of Creatio products. My name is Kare Tibo. I'm a communications manager at Creatio. Today, we're going to talk about the business process management technologies in Creatio with the Studio Creatio product team. We're excited to discuss the new features and product roadmap for Creatio's business process management uh, technologies. I look forward to introducing you to our team so that they can lead a discussion of our new studio features. Today, we'll be joined by Alex Petronenko. Alex is our product evangelist. He is a business process management expert who specializes in process design and automation. Alex will lead today's meeting. Sergey Shishkin is also, also with us today. Sergey is a product with um, of the Studio Creatio team. His team is in charge of performance of process in Creatio. We will also be hosting Alex Kadrikov. Um, Alex is a, a product owner of Studio Creatio. His team is responsible for the process designer and its interface. And we've established an agenda for our webinar today. We're excited to discuss the following items. First, we will share the Studio Creatio latest releases and updates. Then we will discuss upcoming changes to Studio Creatio, followed by our business process management technologies roadmap. We're going to have a Q&A session and we invite you to post your questions in the Q&A section on the right-hand side of your screen. We will first answer the questions that you sent us during the registration for the webinar. Then we will answer the questions that you submitted throughout the chat today. Lastly, we'll try to answer any unanswered questions offline through email after the webinar. Creatio product owners, Sergey and Alex, will be answering the majority of your questions today, and we will also be asking you to answer some questions. Uh, by the end of the webinar, we would like to get your feedback, and we hope that you enjoy the meeting and the format that we've selected to discuss the new Studio Creatio features. So please share your feedback so that we can make future Creatio Club meetings more interesting and useful to you. Uh, please be informed that we are recording the webinar and that the recording will be sent to you shortly after the webinar. We will also, it will also be available at Creatio's community and Creatio's YouTube channel. Uh, now Alex Petronenko is ready to share the latest updates. On to you, Alex. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, Corey. Uh, hi, guys. Very excited to be here uh, with you today and to be your guide into the uh, you know, latest release and updates uh, to our BPM technologies, and of course, talk about what's going to be happening very soon uh, and what is in our uh, backlog. And first of all, let's start with maybe just a quick recap uh, on uh, our product line. As you guys remember, uh, Creatia has been uh, specializing in business process management and automation for quite some time uh, on the market. We are highly recognized by uh, key industry analysts, and uh, not so long ago, we've actually released an additional product, Studio Creation Free, that is available absolutely for free uh, for all of the uh, all of those willing to use it and to try it out, right? And uh, it is actually designed uh, and created in order to simplify the process of uh, collaboration around business processes, uh, their description. Uh, and actually formalization of those processes. So as you remember, or maybe you're hearing this for the first time, uh, this is an online repository that you can share with your colleagues where you can invite them and you can really describe all of the business processes uh, in the VPM and uh, notation 2.0. Uh, and of course, this is only the starting point for us. We plan and vision to make this uh, product really the core of the platform of creation products, uh, where any willing uh, individual would be able or organization would be able to use the product and the platform for free. And then of course, you know, design all of the applications and not just business process in it, run automations, integrations, uh, you know, configure business objects. And so certain points, uh, use them absolutely free and then convert to an enterprise solution and really uh, start using on an enterprise level. That being said, uh, let's probably start with some of the features that were recently released in this product. And we're going to talk uh, specifically about the way that the users are now able to manage the flow. 
Now, first of all, uh, what we did is actually enabled our users to easily manage the way that the process diagram and the flows on the diagram look uh, by simply in building uh, new elements into the process flow uh, by drag and dropping it from the items column on the left hand side and just simply leaving them between a uh, couple of elements within the flow itself. And of course, we've as well uh, allowed them to easily remove any of the items and elements that are available on the diagram, allowing the system to automatically rebuild uh, those flows, uh, connect them to the relevant objects, also based on process management notation 2.0. And of course, based on that notation, since uh, our products have always been uh, you know, based on the notation and the Studio Free product is fully BPMN uh, based, we are in building a lot of validations into the processes based on it. For example, if you are adding a new element and you're trying to connect uh, this element uh, within a, with a flow to a different one, you will not be able to connect it to the starting uh, start element, right, and only an intermediate user task or an intermediate signal. And if you are, for example, when working on the design of the diagram, uh, change the property of one of the intermediate elements, uh, the system will see this change. We'll see that the uh, you know the flows connecting are no longer valid, and will actually remove any connections available. So just something that will help our users to work with the uh, process description a little bit more efficiently, right? And of course, uh, same will cover the way that we are now actually managing the flows between elements, where we've added additional validations between. Uh, what is the uh, element that the flow is coming out to, right? What is the purpose of that element? What is the type of that element? And what is the possible actually flow that could be going out of it, right? If this is a task, then we're saying that it might be only a conditional flow or, or uh, a default flow if the sequence is already used. If this is a start, uh, you know, a simple start, then we can only have a sequence flow and we cannot have any other type of, of flows coming out of it. Now, uh, continuing to it, of course, we've uh, added the same logic and same validation when it gets to working with specific uh, you know, flows coming out of gateways. For example, uh, for the exclusive gateway, we know that there only might be a conditional flow or, or only might be a default flow. And we, of course, have added a same validation when it gets to working with inclusive and parallel gateways right depending on the type that you want to use uh, you can easily uh, then add those flows that are going to be followed uh, by the process measurement notation and then taking into account when actually downloading data, the documentation on those processes now in addition to that we as well have uh, uh, you know added a support for a new type of element which will be the uh, you know event sub process which will actually allow our users to now, when working on the description of the process, add any other uh, sub-process that might be affecting the execution of this business process. For example, if we're talking about the order processing, we always need to take into account that the order might be canceled at any specific moment of time. So we actually wanna say that if we have a uh, event sub-process of order cancellation, we actually then need to cancel the whole order or maybe we need to include some changes into it, right? And another very uh, rather important update and feature is actually working on the performance of the Studio Free product, where, uh, as you know, if you were working on and adding very complex diagrams like this one on the screen right here, uh, you know, sometimes the screen might have been uh, freezing up on the user maybe it wasn't that easy to actually navigate through the process diagram. And now we've actually uh, enabled you know, the backend of the solution to process these diagrams a lot, lot faster, right? It is now a lot more reliable and the end users will not have any issues when working with very complex diagrams uh, that they are describing. Now, additionally uh, to that, we're actually going to be now moving to some of the updates uh, in our Studio uh, Creation Enterprise Edition. Well, our, well, first of all, and maybe the most important update is the fact that we have adopted the user interface and the user experience of uh, Studio Free. As you guys know, we're trying to deliver very consistent functionality across all of our product lines. 
if it's uh, in Studio Free, Studio Enterprise, or our CRM suite. And the idea here is not only to provide you consistent functionality, but to deliver updates, changes, and improvements to those products as fast as possible. This is why, as of the release of 7.15.4 and officially 7.16, all of the products of Creatio uh, will now have a single platform for process management and for uh, you know, campaign management as well, really. The idea here is that uh, we will be able to deliver all of the updates a lot quicker. And even now, all of those changes and all of the updates that we've mentioned in the free product have been already included in our enterprise edition. Now, moving forward, we're going to be talking probably mostly about uh, the uh, support of the enterprise edition. Well, first of all, we want to mention that we have uh, added the ability to easily work with adding elements to the diagram of the processes. Now, if you remember previously, we had a whole separate area that was taking quite some space on the screen with all of the elements that could be used in the process design and automation. Now we've uh, minimized it to only six elements that you can see in the items panel on the left, grouped by their type. Right, whether this will be a user task, this will be a system task, or whether this will be a start signal or uh, you know simple start, intermediate, and events, uh, and of course the gateways. And this way, the users will actually be able to quickly navigate through specific types of elements that they want to use in their uh, design uh, if they need just to pick up a starting point. Because the whole idea is to then actually focus the attention of the user on working only with the diagram, right? If you are adding an element to the process diagram and process, um, uh, you know, and design the process, you can actually drag out a new element out of that element that you've just added or any other one that is already available on the diagram and place it within the flow straight away. And I will demonstrate this feature when we're gonna to get to the live demo. And of course, additional to that, each of the elements that is gonna be added on the diagram can now be easily changed to a different type of uh, task, uh, where priority in the sorting will be given based on the specific type of that task. So if you say you're changing the property of a user task, you'll first see the user task in the list, and then you can actually navigate to a sub menu and switch to the system task if needed, right? And of course, this is again, the way that we will be improving the uh, efficiency of the users, focusing their attention on only the diagram and not having the need to move to the item spell on the left all the time. You're gonna have the, uh, the diagram itself and you're gonna have the settings panel for that element on the right and that is it. Now, in addition to that, uh, what we've all been doing is working a lot around how the users uh, design the processes. We've received quite a lot of customer feedback. And as you know, this is one of the primary uh, channels for us to hear your thoughts. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, even though there are specific guidelines and best practice for process design, still we can say that some processes are designed non-horizontal, but more of a vertical view. In this case, we actually have added support uh, for the flows of the uh, of the process to be rebuilt automatically uh, based on the layout and based on the navigation of that process. Where now we can easily rebuild and we can restructure the process flows depending on how exactly they're going to be looking. And uh, of course, you know, this is also covering very complex uh, diagrams, not with just two elements, but even if we have six or even more elements and we've got more, uh, you know, connections, gateways, and, you know, a very complex uh, process diagram that we're describing, all of the same features are actually going to be supported and will allow us to easily navigate through the uh, process and to, you know, reposition all of the elements there. Now, uh, another uh, rather big uh, update, and uh, this is again something that we've been working quite hard based on your customer voice and uh, partner voice, is also the ability to work with multiple uh, consecutive pages uh, that are gonna be executed or maybe interfering with each other within the end users uh, working the application. So as you remember, if you were following a specific business process and you were working on a task or maybe you were creating a record, updating a record, uh, if there was a parallel process that was launched 
uh, or maybe there was uh, you know a, a sub process that was initiated uh, that page would not be open for the end user but only would be available in the process notifications panel now with the recent update what we did is actually enabled any kind of page not to just appear for the user on top of the previous one but if some changes were made on the previous page they would actually be cached and as soon as the user is back to working with that one he will see all of the changes and he or she will see all of the changes that were made uh, by them and they will be able to continue working with that page disruptively and of course uh, quite a few uh, rather big updates uh, in regards of the uh, process lot maintenance uh, operation specifically uh, where we definitely talk to the fact that we now have the ability to uh, set up specific uh, validity uh, for the process log uh, archive. As you remember, previously we had the ability to actually uh, easily uh, archive all of the process log items uh, in the system uh, so that they are not affecting, uh, maybe they're not topical anymore. And uh, as you remember, you know, even though archive, they were still available in the database, they were still available uh, and taking up space uh, in the database. And now you can easily delete uh, that old historical data that is no longer needed for any purpose. And of course, this is uh, managed through system settings where you can easily set up a time period for which the process log will be actually still kept. And of course, in addition to that, we as well have the ability to automatically cancel any uh, processes that have been um, completed with an error as you remember, those are not archived automatically, right? They still remain in your process log. And now those will be actually uh, removed uh, from the system as well, as depending and based on the system setting that you follow. But uh, enough of the, uh, you know, just slides. Uh, I, we know that you guys love uh, live demonstrations. And probably let's move to one of the instances of uh, our solution that we have prepared for today and see some of those changes live right now as you uh, as you can recognize probably this is uh, somewhat our classic process hand up to sales many of you have uh, encountered it uh, probably and you can already notice here that the process has fully adopted the user uh, interface and the you know the design experience that we have in the studio free all of the items have been rebuilt and now on the left hand side we've got this uh, tiny, very clean, very crisp items panel uh, that we can use when designing the processes, right? And as I mentioned, the idea here, of course, is the user is going to start adding new elements. They can easily drag them, up, drag them out and add them to the diagrams, right? You can actually see here that the item has been inbuilt into the flow. Uh, and as mentioned, again, if you want to add an other element to the diagram after you've added this one, you can choose right here from the item uh, from, from the menu settings whether you want to add a user task or maybe you want to add a system task, right? And of course, this is where you can as well change the type of the element that is going to be used, right? Maybe you want to change it to a user action, right? Or maybe you change your mind and you actually want to change it back to your read data, add data, all, all of those beautiful elements that we have. Uh, in the course solution. And of course, uh, you know, maybe uh, your uh, next question would be, so how about those custom elements that we have added, or maybe the partners have added and, uh, you know, published to the marketplace, what's going to happen with them? Well, the great news is that they will still be available within these menus, and they will still be grouped based on the type that have they have been added initially, right? So keep that in mind in your, uh, in the design of the processes. And of course, Keep in mind that, again, all of the features to the user experience have been added. We can now easily reposition, right, rebuild all of the flows, as we mentioned before. And, you know, same covers to selecting multiple elements at the same time, uh, moving uh, even just the specific captions if we want to, right? And uh, working with the whole uh, process design has become a lot, lot easier in my personal opinion. And definitely make sure to post your uh, questions uh, definitely make sure to post your questions in the chat area uh, make sure to let us know what you think about the new design mode right 
again right here uh, if you want to add an element just simply drag it to the uh, to the diagram from here continue adding the elements maybe switching their types right maybe right here you want to change it to a system action uh, or uh, things like that right and of course the next point and the next uh, item to the uh, demonstration will be the fact that we now again have the ability to work with uh, consecutively opening up pages so for example if we want to launch a new process to create a contact from this quick panel right here from the add uh, or through the run uh, button right we've got a new contact that we need to create and for instance we're going to start adding alex petronenko now imagine that at this step or this stage of the process execution uh, we have some problems we have some interruptions in the way that the uh, you know the user works and for example another process is initiated now, as you can see, this is now going to be a new uh, new page, new process, ultimately, that is running, right? And uh, there is no problem with it being open for the end user. And of course, as soon as I cancel or save that step, I will be back to my previous entry. And you can see that all of the data that I uh, added here is actually still there, right? So again, all of it is going to be cached for the end user, and there will really not be any need to look into the process panel on the right-hand side right here and really pick it up from there and continue with the process execution. Now, uh, don't be alerted. The processes will still be uh, capped in the notifications area right here uh, based on the you know out-of-the-box logic that was developed by us. Uh, if this is a future step, if this is a step that you've actually decided to perform later or you've navigated out of the step into a separate area of the system because you need to check something uh, they will still be available in that panel but if there is a need for for that element to be opened straight away there will not be a problem with it at all and of course this probably the third option and the third uh you know point, point of demonstration will be again the system settings around managing the uh, process log uh, maintenance where we, of course, have all of the items added in a specific group of uh, system settings or a folder, right, where you can actually specify the maximum time for the process log maintenance execution, the frequency of running of those operations, how long we're going to be, uh, you know, keeping the process log in archive, when it's going to expire, uh, and how much, uh, how, how many days we actually want to keep the processes that were completed with an error. Again, keep in mind that all of these are going to be available in uh, the recent release 7.15.4, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And as you know, very soon, uh, maybe even next week, we are going to be releasing our newest edition 7.16.0 that is definitely going to have all of these and more great features available straight away. Okay. Now, uh, let's probably talk about some of those features that are going to be released very, very soon, but not are, are not available yet in the officially released versions of uh, Creatio, Studio Creation Free and NOR Enterprise is definitely the ability to work with the minimap of the process to be actually able to navigate easily through very complex process diagrams based on this map that you can see on the right hand side. Uh, this will actually allow the, you know, the citizen developers, the business analysts, any user who's working with, on the design of the process to easily find a way around, right? Not to scroll uh, all the time around those diagrams, but actually have a very intuitive way of navigating through the process that has been already designed. Uh, of course, uh, next, um, next, very important update and this is something that we have uh, mentioned in the backlog when we were first releasing the studio free uh, is not is the ability to actually import the bpmn format to uh, processes into studio creation enterprise as you remember previously we were supporting the studio uh, creation free to import bpmn formatted processes uh, to move all of the library of the processes to Creation Free or, or to Studio Free. Now, 
after the design of those processes is completed uh, in Studio Free, for example, or in any other software that supports BPMN formats, our users will be able to easily move them and start the automation component of their business. Where once the processes have been described, simply go to the Studio Enterprise, open up a new process diagram, say that you want to import a BPMN diagram, or simply drag and drop it uh, into the uh, process diagram right here, right? And the, process, the system will recognize all of the elements that are designed uh, within, the, uh, within the diagram and will actually adapt it to the executional side of things. Right. And of course, in, in this case, because not all of the uh, items can be easily recognized at this stage, we will be uh, highlighting those elements that need to be corrected, maybe need to be changed through their type. Right. Uh, if there are certain inconsistencies between the process that was described and that, that needs to be executed. And of course, you know, we still keep in mind that all of the items might need to have specific settings uh, based on the architecture uh, and structure of our application. But still having the ability to easily migrate those processes is going to be crucial for our customers and partners. And of course, uh, since uh, we want to continue this seamless transition between Studio Free and into Studio Enterprise, if the process that is imported has actually been created in Studio Free, we will maintain and keep the link to that process in the settings of the executable business process. The idea here is actually to enable the users to easily check what exactly was described when the process was only on the description step before the automation, or if we have made any crucial changes to the business process that is going to be executed based on the uh, user feedback or based on the recent updates in the operations of the organization, we will be able to quickly move back to, to the Studio Free product and to apply same changes on their side. Again, this will enable us to be more efficient with our time and to accelerate the whole process of describing the processes and managing them. Now, another uh, rather important update uh, coming to the um, to the Studio Enterprise Edition is also going to be the support uh, for the Q Management uh, Solution Rabbit MQ. Uh, in this case, we want to make uh, our products even more reliable, uh, fault tolerant. Where Rabbit MQ will be uh, will enable us to actually distribute the load between uh, different queues in process executions, right? And of course, if for some reason the system will be unavailable due to maintenance reasons or due to uh, you know on-prem uh, hosting for some of some sorts, uh, Rabbit MQ will actually enable us to uh, pick up those processes as soon as the system is back online and is back in operation. Okay, uh, so we're going to be moving to the third part of our webinar. Again, guys, I encourage you to ask questions in the chat area, uh, in the questions area. Uh, our product owners are here to answer your questions, and uh, we're going to be voicing them over by the uh, end of the webinar. But moving forward, definitely we want to talk about the roadmap of what is going to be coming uh, in the nearest time to our products. Well, first of all, what we want to do is actually introduce the ability, uh, sorry, introduce a new element that will be the expanded sub process, where we will be able to include a sub process into the diagram and then convert it into expanded sub process. Again, uh, introducing more elements that are going to be supported uh, by Studio Free from the business process management notation version 2.0. And of course, additional elements that we want to as well introduce are going to be the uh, message flows between different pools that are used in the design of the process, uh, introducing groups of elements just so that we can add more descriptive elements to them as we are working with the process elements and uh, you know groups of items there. And of course, the ability to link different sub processes in the studio of free. Uh, as you remember, in our Studio Enterprise Edition, we have always been able to link different executable processes between each other 
uh, through a sub process element. Now the same thing we're going to be as well introducing to Studio Free to deliver the same consistent functionality across all product lines where once a process has been designed once you can reuse it anytime and you can easily navigate through all of the variety of business processes that might be involved uh, in the lives of the users. Uh, and of course, uh, this is also going to be covering a more high level overview of the business processes and how they are connected to each other through process maps, where you can actually outline different departments, different uh, operations that they run, and you can then from and you can from there actually start uh, incorporating more descriptions into how exactly each department is working, what are the processes that they follow. And in order to enable that, we are actually planning to develop three larger features uh, in the studio products. First of all, to be able to design the organizational structure in the free products, where similar to what you can do now in the enterprise edition, uh, we will be able to create uh, departments, teams, uh, you know, groups of users that might be involved in the uh, process execution or you know, process description. And then to be able to link those uh, uh, that organizational structure into the pools and lanes in the process, just so that we can then re first of all reuse some of the terminology that we actually already have in the system, right? When it gets to groups of users, and second of all, we will actually be able to have a little bit different perspective, where we will be able to look at a specific department, a specific group of users and actually see all of the business processes where they are uh, you know, per participating, where they are involved. And of course, in addition to that, we will be able to set up specific process KPIs, specific key performance indicators for each of the business process that is gonna be described, just so that we can later on convert it and transfer it to the executable process. And of course, support for more advanced capabilities of documentation of the processes. As you remember, every business process that we design in the Studio Free product can now be exported as a BPMN file, as a PNG and as SVG document, and even as a PDF with the full description of the process itself, of each element, each flow that is going to be used and the users might follow. And this will be expanding into additional options of documenting the specific requirements for the processes, perhaps process playback, so on and so forth. And moving to the some of the changes of the um, enterprise edition of the studio product, definitely we want to talk about the fact that we will be uh, working towards the support of uh, processing of record collections in our process. Now, we all remember that it is possible to process uh, specific collections even now uh, without the you know, native uh, support of that feature, uh, but it would require just some additional settings around building a cycle in the process diagram, or perhaps uh, you know, incorporating an additional script task to process those collections a little bit easier through a little bit of development. In our case, we will be introducing native ways or working with data collections, processes, processing them within the process, and actually being able to utilize those within integrations and within other um, purposes of the business process management. Now guys, keep in mind that a lot of the things that we're working on are coming directly from you, coming from your feedback, from your customer and partner voice. So whenever you have a new uh, suggestion, whether you, whenever you have a new thing that you think might be uh, making our products better or easier to work with, make sure to send those to our support or uh, you know post a question on our community uh, because we don't just have those we really listen to you we really work on each of the uh, items in the feedback and we really categorize and prioritize and put them in the backlog and try to cover as much as possible with every release that we are working on and at uh, this moment, I think we'll be uh, taking some questions from the audience. Great. Thank you, Alex. Uh, it's time for the Q&A session. Um, I uh, will yep. be... Great. Um, so 
is it possible to create any kind of workflow and develop packages for different customers using a studio license is our first question. Uh, yes, the answer that it is actually possible uh, if we're talking about the specific, you know, Studio Enterprise Edition, uh, where you can place any kind of business process or even a business object that is related to that process into separate packages in our configuration and export those packages and either have them saved for yourself or as well publish them on the marketplace uh, in the templates uh, section of the marketplace and really allow other uh, partners, other customers to download those. You, you might as well just uh, you know, monetize those through a uh, marketplace uh, program. But yeah, definitely, definitely possible. Great, thank you, Alex. Our next question is, can you elaborate on Creatio's capabilities in terms of pro uh, business process modeling? Specifically, we're interested in learning more about different process views, KPI management, and process publishing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, great question. So, the idea here is that uh, we've kind of covered some of those uh, as we were going through the system, right? I believe this is a registration question. But the idea here that we are currently focusing around the design of one specific diagram or process flow as it is, right? We will be releasing uh, from our backlog the process maps and how different departments are connected to each other if they're going towards a, the same goal, for example. Right, uh, and in regards of publishing, we are, uh, you know, we have specific plans in, first of all, uh, maintaining the access and permissions within the studio products, studio free specifically, in making the process available for other participants that work within the same instance of the studio free. And then of course, be able to publish as in uh, generate an HTML uh, file and build it into your website. Uh, maybe you want to publish it to your corporate network. Maybe you want to publish on the, you know, on our customers' website to inform their customers on how exactly they are following specific business processes. So we do have a lot of plans in this regard. We have accomplished some of those uh, already, and more changes will be coming soon. Uh, and great times uh, await us. Great, thank you, Alex. Our next question is, how can users execute a process designed on Studio Free and Studio Enterprise or other products such as Sales Creatio, Marketing Creatio, or Service Creatio? Can you please explain the upgrade process from free to enterprise? So two separate questions here. Sure, uh, so currently the upgrade process is very simple. Uh, there are no limits to use the Studio Free product whatsoever. Uh, as soon as our customers or uh, you know, the users of the free product feel like they're ready to open up the world of business process uh, automation, uh, they just need to go to our website and really uh, contact our sales guys and uh, you know, request a quote for how many licenses they need based on the product that they require. Uh, but if to talk about how exactly the processes are going to be converted, uh, as you know, the uh, Studio Enterprise is, an, the, is the underlying platform for all of our CRM uh, suites and marketplace apps. So whenever you design a business process in Studio Free and uh, import it into the Enterprise Edition or into the, market, uh, you know, into the CRM product, uh, into the process management uh, diagram, it will be available as part of the process library and will be available for automation. Now, keep in mind that we have introduced uh, a new UI for the uh, marketing campaign design, uh, which has adopted the same uh, view and the same uh, user, user, interfa user interface and experience as, as the Studio Free product, but the imports uh, of the diagrams will not be available uh, from Studio Free, just because those are different tools and different purposes. But uh, as soon as even uh, I believe now you can uh, you know request a trial uh, on our website for the studio and a price of the latest version uh, maybe even contact support to help you enable the feature of showing the uh, the new UI and UX that includes the import capability uh, and actually try it out yourself and give us your feedback tell us if it's working uh, fine or if we need to work on some uh, changes on it. Great, thank you, Alex. Uh, our next question is, do you have examples of processes created in Studio Free that have been imported into Studio Enterprise? 
I believe that uh, we internally in the organization are currently are working in the same way that we envision our customers and partners working, where we do describe our internal processes in the Studio Free and then easily import them into the, uh, you know, into our internal CRM and continue with the automation piece of it. And same covers some of the departments that I've worked with, uh, specifically in pre-sales, that sometimes incorporate this step in discussing the processes with the customers actually uh actually collaborating capturing their feedback and their requirements uh, in regards to processes and then easily importing those and uh, continuing with the automation side great and then our last question um do you have plans to expand the low code features such as business rule capabilities yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, as you know, currently we are we have we, st we stand pretty uh, strongly in regards of building different flows uh, based on business rules within the process, where we can compare multiple values. Uh, we can uh, you know incorporate formulas, transformations of data, and even external data that we can capture through website uh, web service integration. And of course, we want to improve the user experience. Uh, we want to improve. Uh, the accessibility of this feature, but not but not by sacrificing the flexibility of it, right? So if you have any feedback in regards of how you are limited right now, please let us know. We will definitely uh, look into it. We'll give you uh, possible options how to work with it. Or if you have specific suggestions on how we can make this whole process of building business rules for the flows uh, easier, uh, we would be happy to hear that. Great. All right. Thank you, Alex. Now, before we finish today's meeting, I'd like to ask you to give your feedback by participating in a short poll that you will see on your screen shortly. Um, you know, did you find the webinar interesting and useful? I personally think it was very interesting and useful. Great. Thank you. And um, thank you, Alex, for, for a great pre uh, presentation. Many thanks to all of you for your questions and your active participation throughout the webinar. Uh, thank you again to our product owners, Alex and Sergey, for answering the questions in the chat. And in case there are some questions that have been left unanswered, we'll consider answering them and, and sending, or excuse me, we will be answering them through email. Um, we'll also be sharing a recording of the webinar, which will be sent to you through email within the next few days. Uh, we plan to devote the next Creatio Club webinar to reports and dashboards in Creatio. So please um, continue to follow the updates on uh, about the upcoming meeting at Creatio Community. Thank you so much again for your participation and have a great day.